If you buy Coca-Cola today, the company is selling for about 110 to $15 billion in the market. The question is, if you had 110 or 15 billion, would you lay it out today to get what the Coca-Cola company is going to deliver to you over the next two or 300 years? It's so true if you're buying a farm, it's true if you're buying an apartment house, any financial asset, oil in the ground, you're laying out cash now to get more cash back later on. And the question is, how much are you gonna get? Welcome back, rich followers. We hope this video inspires you to get started on your dream. So please watch until the end. And if you are new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other educational videos like this. Let's get started. Buffett describes how he finds and values a company's worth. Intrinsic value is what is the number that if you were all knowing about the future and could predict all the cash that a business would give you between now and Judgment Day, discounted at the proper discount rate, that number is what the intrinsic value of a business is. In other words, the only reason for making an investment and laying out money now is to get more money later on. That's what investing is all about. When you look at a bond, so means the United States government bond, it's very easy to tell what you're gonna get back. It says it right on the bond. It says when you get the interest payments, it says when you get the principal. So it's very easy to figure out the value of a bond. It can change tomorrow if interest rates change, but you are, the cash flows are printed on the bond. The cash flows aren't printed on a stock certificate. That's the job of the analyst is change that stock certificate, which represents an interest in the business and change that into a bond and say, this is what I think it's going to pay out in the future. When we buy some new machine for Shaw to make carpet, that's what we're thinking about, obviously. And we all learn that in business school, but it's the same thing for a big business. If you buy Coca-Cola today, the company is selling for about 110 to $15 billion in the market. The question is, if you had 110 or 15 billion, would you lay it out today to get what the Coca-Cola company is going to deliver to you over the next two or 300 years? The discount rate doesn't make much difference after, as you get further out. But, and that is a question of how much cash they're gonna give you. It isn't a question about how many analysts are gonna recommend it or what the volume in the stock is or what the chart looks like or anything. It's a question of how much cash it's gonna give you. That's the only reason. It's a true, if you're buying a farm, it's true if you're buying an apartment house, any financial asset, oil in the ground, you're laying out cash now to get more cash back later on. And the question is, how much are you going to get? When are you going to get it? And how sure are you? And when I calculate intrinsic value of a business, when we buy businesses, and whether we're buying all of a business or a little piece of a business, I always think we're buying the whole business because that's my approach to it. I look at it and say, what will come out of this business and when? And what you really like, of course, is them to be able to use the money they earn and earn higher returns on it as you go along. Berkshire has never distributed anything to its shareholders, but its ability to distribute goes up as the value of the businesses we own increases. We can compound it internally, but the real question is, Berkshire selling for, we'll say 105 or so billion now. If you're gonna buy the whole company for 105 billion now, can we distribute enough cash to you soon enough to make it sensible at present interest rates to lay out that cash now. And that's what it gets out to. If you can't answer that question, you can't buy the stock. You can gamble in the stock if you want to, or your neighbors can buy it. But if you don't answer that question, and I can't answer that for internet companies, for example, and there are a lot of companies, there are all kinds of companies I can't answer it for, but I just stay away from those. Buffett describes the traits he looks for when hiring people. We look for three things when we hire people. We look for intelligence, we look for initiative or energy, and we look for integrity. And if they don't have the latter, the first two will kill you. Because if you're gonna get somebody without integrity, you want them lazy and dumb. You don't want to spark and energetic. Buffett describes human psychology and how it applies to the stock market. Investors behave in very human ways, which is they get very excited during bull markets and they look in the rear view mirror and they say, I made money last year. I'm gonna make more money this year. So this time I'll borrow. Or the neighbor says, I wasn't in last year when that neighbor was dumber than I, I made a lot of money. So I'm gonna go in this year. So they're always looking in the rear view mirror. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see a lot of money having been made in the last few years, they plow in and they just push and push and push on prices. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see no money having been made, they just say, this is a lousy place to be. So they don't care what's going on in the underlying business. And it's astounding, but that's, that makes for a huge opportunity. It's just huge opportunity. Buffett discusses his investment philosophy and what he was taught by his mentor, Ben Graham. I've been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis. Look around for things that are cheap. And 
I was taught that, say, in 1949 or 50. It made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call used cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this, on the street, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff. Disgusting, you throw it away, but it's free. It's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, one puff cigarette. That's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Although you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to buy a wonderful business. And so now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. Buffett discusses his biggest mistakes and why taking aggressive action is important. But the biggest mistakes I've made by far are mistakes of omission and not commission. It's the things I knew enough to do they were within my circle of competence and I was sucking my thumb. And that is really, those are the ones that hurt. They don't show up anyplace. I probably cost Berkshire at least $5 billion, for example, by sucking my thumb 20 years ago or close to it when Fannie Mae was having some troubles and we could have bought the whole company for practically nothing. And I don't worry about that if it's Microsoft because Microsoft isn't in my circle of competence. So I, I don't have any reason to think I'm entitled to make money out of Microsoft or out of Cocoa Beans or whatever. But I did know enough to understand Fannie Mae and I blew it. And that never shows up under conventional accounting. But I know the cost of it. I know I passed it up. And those are the big mistakes. And I've had plenty of them. And unless I tell you about them in the annual report and I resist the temptation sometimes. Unless I tell you about them in the annual report, you're not going to know it because it doesn't show up under conventional accounting. But omission is way bigger than commission. There is big opportunities in life have to be seized. We don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. And even to do it on a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. You've really got to, you got to grab them when they come because you're not going to get 500 great opportunities. You would be better off if when you got out of school here, you got a punch card with 20 punches on it. And every, every financial decision you made, you used up a punch. You'd get very rich because you'd think through very hard each one. I mean, you went to a cocktail party and somebody talked about a company you didn't even understand what they did or couldn't pronounce the name, but they'd made some money last week and another one like it. You wouldn't buy it if you only had 20 punches on that card. Buffett addresses the idea of not selling out for any price. Loyalty is more important than money. In terms of our wholly owned businesses, we're not going to sell no matter how much anybody offers us for. I mean, if somebody offers us three times what something is worth at Seas Candy, the Buffalo News, Borsheim's, whatever it may be, we're not going to sell it. I may be wrong in having that approach. I know I'm not wrong if I owned 100% of Berkshire because that's the way I want to live my life. I've got all the money I could possibly need. It just amounts to a change in the newspaper story on my obituary and the amount of money the foundation has. And to break off relationships with people I like, and people that have joined me because they think it's a permanent home, to do that simply because somebody waves a big check at me would be like selling one of my children because somebody waved a big check. So I, I won't do that. And I want to tell my partners I won't do it so that they're not disappointed in me. More and more with certain stocks, we've got that approach. Now, if we were chronically short of funds and had all kinds of opportunities coming, we might have a somewhat different approach. But our inclination is not to sell things unless we get really discouraged perhaps with the management. Well, we think the economic characteristics of the business change in a big way. I mean, and that happens, but we're not gonna sell simply because it looks too high in all likelihood. Buffett explains that he should only expect to make money in things he understands. I have an old fashioned belief that I only should expect to make money in things that I understand. And when I say understand, I don't mean understand what the product does or anything like that. Understand what the economics of the business are likely to look like 10 years from now or 20 years from now. I know in general what the economics of say Wrigley chewing gum will look like 10 years from now. The internet isn't going to change the way people chew gum. It isn't going to change which gum they chew. You know, if you own the chewing gum market in a big way and you've got double mint and spearmint and juicy fruit, those brands will be there 10 years from now. So I can't pinpoint exactly what the numbers are going to look like on Wrigley, but I'm not going to be way off if I try to look forward on something like that. Evaluating that company is within what I call my circle of competence. I understand what they do. I understand the economics of it. I understand the competitive aspects of the business. If you found value in this video, we would like to give you another video for you to enjoy next. Please like this video and share it with your friends on social media.
don't forget to subscribe if you are new here, so you won't miss another one of our videos. The more you learn, the more you earn.